you may ask. I practice a lot of past exam paper to prepare ACCA F9 exam, but I fail. I don't know why. Or I spend a lot of time in practice numeric questions. Is that enough? And here, two questions have the same work. Is practice. So what should you practice before the exam? From the March 18 examiner report, I share with you what you have to know in preparing section C of ACCA F9 exam. The first tip share with you is practice, practice to excel in calculation. Okay, it's very important you are excel in calculation because many students are performing good in the following calculation in the March exam, the net present value calculation and also the WAC, the weighted average cost of capital calculation. So, what is the implication to you? It means showing good work in numeric questions is the minimum requirement. My first tip to you is practicing past paper numeric questions can help you to do well in the coming exam as the requirements are sometimes similar to those in the past, but it's only the base or minimum requirement to pass as the more questions only share the total marks less than half. The second tip to you is some common mistakes find in numeric questions that you have to avoid. Even examiner comments, numeric questions are generally performed well by students. But some careless mistakes are still be found. For example, the first is about the NPV calculation. Some mistake like incorrectly placing the initial investment in year one and inflating price and cost incorrectly or incorrect time period on tax related cash flows. Filling that back the TAD test allowed depreciation. And our lovely examiner share with example to practice and see how to avoid those mistakes. So you can follow that, you can follow his instructions by practicing the pattern company. These questions appear in the ACCA by September or December 2017. So you can refer it. And the next part is about the web calculation. Some mistakes such as incorrectly calculating cost of equity by dividend growth model or capital assets pricing model and incorrectly using before tax interest payment in cost of debt or long note calculation. So our seminar also share one past paper questions for you to practice and see how to avoid these mistakes. You can refer to too far money. It appears in ACCA F9 in September, December 2017. And my second tip to you here, you have to review the September, December 2017 sample questions for sample NPV calculation, refer to powder company, and for web calculations, please refer to too far company. And learning the correct way in performing these calculations is definitely helps you in the numeric questions in your ACCA F9 exam. The third tip here is about this first question. It's not a secret. Okay, uh, a lot of students know that 50% or even more of the section C's marks are in discursive questions. And examiner's reports say, saying that many students only get a few marks in discursive questions. Then what are the problems? Two common problems that were found first. 
not answering what is required, and the second is not enough time to work on discursive questions. It means that a lot of students focusing on the calculation, they spend a lot of time to calculate the correct answer, they think it's correct, and they miss the discursive question. They don't allocate enough time to work it on. And from our observation, the analysis of past paper questions, there are two types of discursive questions in the ACA F9 exam. The first one is comment on the calculation and advice. The second is discussion of a particular subject. So let's look at um, what you should do based on examples quoted by the ACCA F9 examiner. For example, for the first topic we share with you is about how to comment on the calculations and advice. Let's take a look of one past paper. The Pelter company, what we share with you, examiner comments, is a very good example. And here, the requirement in under section B, under part B, is discuss financial stability of the investment project. Free mark in discussing financial acceptability of the project. A lot of students just simply writing the accept or not accept without further elaboration, no marks. Sorry, because you have to explain why you accept or are not accepted. If you do explain in details, no math can be given. So you are required to give reason why you accept the project. Let's look again about the question, the powder, co the powder company. In a question, part A asks you sh the calculation of the net present value and discounted payback period. So you have two calculations, you have two answers. And the first answer, the NPV is positive, so the decision rule is to choose it. The second is discount payback period, smaller than the target, so it's not accepted. And the, you have to give the correct advice, which is accept the project because NPV decision rule is consistent with value optimization in financial management. It shows you understand well of the decision rule. It's the NP, positive NPV rule. And you know that the discount payback period is not accepted or a given target is higher than the dis, is, is, is better than the discount payback period. So here, you have to show your understanding about the MPV decision rule. And next, move to the discussion of a particular subject. Example quoted from Ufar Company, a suggested example by the examiner. And in part C of this question, it asks three, three, three advantages of using convertible loans as a source of long-term finance. So I use three steps how to answer the how to answer these questions correctly by three steps. Okay, six marks given. The first step is to highlight the keywords in the questions. The keywords include first three advantages. So look, not not two, not four, three at one advantage. Second is convertible loan looks. Third, it's a company, not investor. Remember, company. And fourth, the long-term finance. So here you have to highlight the keywords and then the move on the next step. The next step is you have to write answer with proper structure because it is six marks on three advantages. Okay. I suggest put one sentence to explain the convertible loan looks. Only one sentence is fine. Then second paragraph states the first advantage. Here I would like to put convertible rather than redemption to the company. The third paragraph states the second advantage, lower interest rate, for example. Fourth paragraph states third advantage is about the debt capacity. And the final step is to review the points you have written down to make sure three advantages are included. Not two 
and not four. Three of me. So my first tip to you is pay attention to what is required and answer straight to it. Plan enough time to work on discursive questions. The fourth thing to do here, you try write down the past paper answer on the discursive question. Why? Because we have a lot of researchers. We found different researchers show writing down what needs to be remembered or memorized works for memory recall. And the advantages of writing down the pieces of work because it helps to memorize key terms of concept. Know how fast you write, especially some students taking paper based exam, and it is effective and work. A lot of researchers support arguments. If you would like to remember or memorize key terms and concepts, then write it down. So the fourth tip to you here for section is to write down past paper answer, even only keywords or some important sentences work on memorized terms and concepts. It helps. If you like this video, just make sure you subscribe our channel right now. Also, if you want to have more ACC exam information and study resources, just go to bodypass.com to check. It's free. Now, I want to turn it over to you. Two types of questions in Section C, numeric questions and discursive questions. In your study, which one of them do you plan to spend more time? Numeric questions or discursive questions? Let me know giving a comment below right now.